Our first speakers are Jennifer Nuzieka and Mm -hmm. Okay, and Carl LeBlonde, they will be reflecting on their experience of incorporating blended learning into organic chemistry courses and its effects on increasing student motivation, preparation, and interest in the subject matter. So, I'm interactive as a teacher, so I'm going to be interactive as a presenter, and I won't wait for everybody to answer all the questions, but I like to have a discussion, and so we see some answers, and I ask you the questions, what is just-in-time teaching to know what your ideas are before I present them. I was going to present with Doceri, so I could like write on my iPad and it would magically appear on the screen, but Doceri didn't like the um, Wi-Fi network to appear, so no Doceri today. So here's my answer about just-in-time teaching. Um, so these were some answers that people might have answered. So I, I would not say it's instructors increasing efficiency because it's not very efficient. But it does involve students reading the book before class and doing warm-up exercises. And sometimes the warm-up exercises are written sentences with words. And in my experience, organic chemistry is very visual, lots of graphics. And so if the only answers they're providing are with words, you don't learn that much about what they understand and what they still need help on. So the students answer the questions before class, and then in class we can talk about higher level things that actually address what their misconceptions are. So just in time teaching, there's books about it. It was developed by physicists at the Air Force Academy. Mm -hmm. So another question for you. Okay, so I like this. Tailors material to what's needed most by students. And students appreciate that. So one thing I do is I actually copy their answers to the warm-up questions and I put them in my PowerPoint for the day. And they, they like get excited, like, well, my answers were picked. Uh, they're always uh, anonymous, but they remember what they wrote. Um, so it helps students prepare before class. Students have a really hard time reading chemistry textbooks. And the only way they're going to develop that skill is if we encourage them and help them develop that skill. And so the reading questions, the warm-ups, are designed to help them see what the big points are and help them practice the questions, what they have to answer it with words. So then we can spend more time on the complicated ideas. It doesn't save time. But it does help students take more ownership of their learning. Another question for you. Okay, students teaching students. This is a good answer. There's some more specific things. So the approach that they use is clicker questions are given, students answer individually, the teacher looks at the student responses and figures out if they get it or not. If they get it, we go on. If they don't get it, and enough of them get it that it might be useful, we say, you guys talk about this and answer again. Actually, the words I use with my class are, argue with your neighbor. And um, there's literature that suggests that this discussion of the concepts helps in their learning. All right, this is for you to understand really why I use Nearpod, because there's a whole bunch of things that you can use to ask clicker questions. Nearpod's the only one that lets you do this. Most of you are not chemists. Draw whatever you like. Make a happy face, whatever. The point is, I can learn a lot more about their student misconceptions when they are asked to provide answers where they draw structures. Because this is how they're going to answer on tests and quizzes, is by drawing structures. I'm going to charge ahead. This is the classroom that I teach in. The chemists at my school call this the kumbaya room. We work in teams, and there's a lot of discussion and interaction between people. Um, class is, when I lecture, it's like what I'm doing here. When I don't lecture, then they might work on activities from this book. The subtitle of it is, Who Gives a Darn? And it's like relating chemistry, organic chemistry concepts to real life. So when I teach, I use Joseri, Just in Time Teaching, Nearpod, Peer Instruction, I tried to use the Libre text this semester. It was not so good. And Open OCHEM. And I'm now going to introduce Carl LeBlanc because he's the author of Open OCHEM. And it's beautiful. 
We thank you very much. I don't know if it's quite beautiful yet, but we're getting there. We're kind of in, in uh, development stages at this point. But um, let's talk a little bit about what Open OCHEM is. Open OCHEM is an LTI based collaborative assessment system for any LMS that works for any learning management system. Okay? How it does that is it's, it's really based on this LTI technology, learning tools and their operability. Um, well, let's let's talk a little bit about why 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 do we need open OCHEM? Well, organic chemistry education is very very unique and challenging. Um, like Jennifer pointed out, we have students try to draw structures. Okay, so there's there's 3D, 2D structures. They have to be able to see things in, in three dimensions. Okay, where where different groups are in a molecule is very important. Okay, there there are other very specific types of uh, structural motifs: Newman projection, Fisher projection. Most of you guys probably don't know what those are. There's also this very very rich nomenclature in organic chemistry. It's like a language to itself, essentially. Okay? We've got chemical reactions, we've got to predict products, reactants. Um, all of organic chemistry is about mechanisms, electron flow. So how in the world could we do any of this online? It's very, very difficult. When I first started teaching uh, about 10 years ago, um, I started to use Moodle. Okay? And you, you can't just use multiple choice questions, open-ended questions for organic chemistry. The students got to be able to draw structures and reactions and mechanisms. So that's kind of how this open OCHEM idea started. Well, actually, back in uh, 2013, 2014, I developed uh, the easy OCHEM question types. They, they only worked on Moodle, okay? But they allowed uh, students to draw structures and, and do reactions and things like that. So after, uh, after the BCCE meeting in 2014, uh, Jennifer and I and uh, Aaron started to talk about, well, how can we expand on this? How can we make this uh, you know, work in any learning management system? And eventually build up a large database of questions and collaborate on building very uh, interactive questions. So that's how the idea of Open OCHEM came about. Um, this slide kind of goes with the previous slide, but from a student's perspective, a success in organic chemistry is very, very difficult. Like I said, you gotta have to draw structure. They're, they're, they're expected to answer questions like draw the most stable carbocation or uh, construct butane and its anti-conformation. Again, very, very graphical kind of in nature. Okay? So essentially, we need specialized interactive systems designed for organic chemistry, and that's kind of the idea behind Open OCHEM. Okay? So real quick, how Open OCHEM works. Well, it's, it's built on top of a, a framework called SUGI. What SUGI does is it takes all the LTI away from me. I don't have to worry about that. It's a black box. I don't want to deal with the LTI programming. What I like is, is the organic side of things and, and designing question types and things like that. So I built my system on top of uh, our system on top of uh, SUGI. But it's pretty simple. The instructor gets a key and a passcode, and then they can connect via their LMS, any LMS, Canvas, Moodle, B2L. When you get in there, ultimately what you're gonna do is you're gonna start creating questions, okay? And then we'll sum these questions into activities, and then you can assign this activity to your students on a per learning <coughs> basis in, in the uh, LMS. So just real quick, I have a, a copy of, uh, this is my personal Moodle site that I run at uh, IEP, Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I have a course in there called Sandbox Course, okay, so a little Sandbox Course. So if I wanted to insert a quiz or something from Open OCHEM, you just uh, click turn editing on. It's similar in the, in the other LMSs, LMSs as well. But uh, you turn uh, uh, editing on, and then uh, we're looking for uh, external tools. So you add an external tool, add. And I already set it up here, Open OCHEM in here. But essentially, you would uh, go here and click uh, the settings tab, and you'd be able to put your key and your ask and stuff. I've got it all set up there. So let's just. I don't know, let's call this a quiz tip. And so then uh, save, return to course, and then you should, I should see my quiz two now in there. So when a student clicks on it, it takes you and embeds my site, our site, Open OCHEM, into the learning management system. Okay? Now within there, in the learning management system, now what you do is you can uh, create questions and activities and things like that, and, uh, and assign activities and questions. Okay? So, We'll come back and I'll show you another demo here in a little bit. So that's kind of the idea. The instructor uh, sets it up, connects to their LMS, creates an activity, and then students can connect to that activity via the LMS as well. Grades are transferred and all those kind of good stuff like that. Okay. But um, there's a number of question types we've developed so far. 2D structures, we'll draw, I'll show you examples in a minute. Uh, 3D structures, um, conformers, uh, curve error formalism, again, very organic y kind of stuff. Okay. But it doesn't mean a lot to most of the textbooks. So, okay. um, I, I really built a lot of really rich features into uh, uh, OpenOCAM, and uh, one one very important feature is this 
positive and negative feedback. Okay, we like wrong answers. Okay, a student makes a wrong answer, and we can help them get back on track. That's learning. Okay, um, I've built a rating system into it. Students and instructors can rate questions. It's kind of part of the collaboration technique or collaboration features. Um, you can categorize questions by general categories, Bloom's taxonomy, <coughs> generic tags. You can even uh, have questions run randomly from based on taxonomy and difficulty and things like that. And there's all kinds of statistics and things like that that's saved as well. Okay. But like I said, we I built this system to have a fantastic feedback system in it. Okay, and uh, it's kind of, I kind of modeled after Moodle. I really like Moodle. Okay, Moodle has a nice feedback system. But so this is an example of a chemical reaction. And up on top here, this is what would be what we call an elimination reaction. That's the correct pathway that would occur for this type of molecule. Okay, the incorrect pathway would be this way. So what my software does is it recognizes the incorrect answer, and then we can build custom feedback to meet those incorrect answers and kind of nip it in the butt, right? Right as the their students' mistakes or errors occur. Okay? I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Um, here's an example of uh, an electron pushing curve there. It's supposed to be animated, but Nearpod didn't. Uh, my animated GIS didn't work in Nearpod. So no to all you Nearpod users. I'll say. I'll come back. I'll show you an example of this in a second. Um, well, like I said, we, we, you create these questions, and then you assemble these questions into activities. Activities are like quizzes, homework assignments, practice sessions, things like that. Okay? Um, so there's different navigation options. There's free navigation, which is taking the questions in any order you want. There's sequential navigation. Very, very uh, similar to most learning management systems. Okay? Actually, I kind of stole a lot of these ideas off Moodle because I really like the way that the Moodle question engine and all that works. Okay? Um, there are different attempt options. You can you know, individual attempts, and then you have to worry about grading and things like that. But there's also a build on last where students see their previous uh, answers, and then they can modify those answers, kind of like a homework assignment. There's timing and random questions and things like that as well. Um, one of the, 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 the probably the, the most important feature that I felt and Jennifer felt to incorporate into this was a collaboration feature. Okay, so. Um, as an example, so on Open OCamp, you can follow different instructors. So let's say I'm following Jennifer, and she creates a really cool question type, okay, or a really cool question, okay. Um, what we can do is, uh, if I'm following her, I'll get a little notification in there saying, "Oh, Jennifer just made a really cool question. Go check it out." I can go to that question, check it out. I can make comments on that question. I can go in there and even copy that question. I can edit that question, okay. There's groups, we can form groups. So Jennifer and I and Aaron are in a group on Open OCAM and we all can collaborate together on these different questions and things. Okay, so as an example, I'll show you a quick example of uh, well, just a, a demo. I'm on openocam.org, if you go there's a little demo tab, you have to log in with Google, but here's an example of a free navigation question. Okay. You can see I've already got, taken some attempts at this quiz. So this, this is open OCAM. Okay? In this particular question here, they want you to draw the product of this reaction. And the product is really an alkene like this. So I can update my answer there. And this particular question here incorporates a JMOL 3D object into it. And in organic chemistry, we have handedness, right-handed molecules, left-handed molecules. Students have to be able to determine the, the handedness of a molecule. Okay? This particular molecule right here, they can rotate around and look at it. And, Determine whether it's R or S. The last time I took this quiz a little bit ago, I picked the right answer R. So I can save my results and go back to the page. I can come back here anytime and, and, and rework on these problems. Right? So that's kind of how Open OCAM kind of works. Um, as another example, in, in, in my learning management system here on this screen, I'm logged into Moodle, okay, and I'm connected to Open OCAM. If uh, I go back to here, done with this quiz. I can log in as a pseudo user here. So right now I'm logged in as a, an instructor called Jane Instructor, you can see up there. So if Jane's in here and she goes to collaborate groups, she'll see the admin group, okay? She, they can go and uh, click on this group here, well, that's the group they administrate. But you can join groups, okay? So if I wanted to join this group, I click join requests, okay? And then uh, I'll go back to my learning management system here. Today is the day I have a bug, but I should see a notification right here saying that so-and-so wanted to join your group, and then you can allow that person to join your group, and then they can collaborate together on questions and things like that. 